For every game developer, one of the best parts of development is bringing people in early. These guys are the best of the best, and they're looking at our game, and we just hope that they enjoy what they see. Just being a part of this, even though it's just for a day, is, is a remarkable experience. Being able to try something before everyone else it gets the driving me going, I'm all excited. You see this competitiveness, this sort of how can I use what he just told me to my advantage. That's all we've ever wanted, be able to give our input and make the game that we all love and play that much better. Kill confirmed. Frank really developed from the idea of, of playing again with the TDM rules. We've added this idea that once you get a kill, you become cranked. You start speeding up, you're running all crazy. And then you have 30 seconds to kill another enemy. And if you don't, you explode. And die. And all of a sudden it becomes very frantic Call of Duty. Lots of kills really quickly. I was running around the map going crazy looking for that last kill at the two second mark. You get a guy in your sights and someone comes in and steals that kill from you, and then you blow up, that's kind of a problem. With Search and Rescue, we realized we wanted to build upon Search and Destroy. It's a Search and Destroy type of game, except when you die, you drop a tag. Your teammates can go pick up your dog tags and revive you. But if the enemy gets it, you're out. It requires a lot more teamwork, a lot of communication when you're playing. You're playing chess, not checkers, when you play Search and Rescue. It creates a whole different dynamic in Search. <laughs> reviving teammates and taking out the enemy's tags became another objective within the search and destroy mode. I think it's gonna be a lot more strategy involved. Now we have the contextual lean. Where you get up to a corner and, can, and lean left or right, I think it's great. And it's something that needed to be introduced into Call of Duty, and I love the way that it was introduced. Knee slide's badass. To be able to slide and then get into a position and be ready to roll in that position is a unique thing in Call of Duty. Basically, when you're sprinting, you do like a cool slide animation. I was sliding all over the place with that thing. And also the, the mantling ability. Basically, when you're climbing up on stuff, you like carry your momentum with you. I love that. It just promotes faster gameplay, more swift movement. We brought back Assault, Support, and Specialist. And with Assault, I saw a lot of people choosing the dog, and it's one of my personal favorites as well. To have this companion, this dog that helps you out, is so cool. It'll growl or bark when there's an enemy nearby, so you may be alerted to someone upstairs or right out the corner. We haven't really seen that in Call of Duty before, to have real AI things that escort you around the map. That really appealed to me. We revamped the way we use UAV. Now they're called SATCOMs. This adds a different element as far as being able to hide these, stack them, put them off to the side, and then play a little bit more defensive mind because now you can actually protect your UAV. The first tier will give players eyes on. So when a teammate sees an enemy, you'll see it on your mini-map. When you throw down a second SATCOM, it gives you the traditional UAV that everyone's familiar with. And when a third is thrown down, that's when you see the directional movement of enemies. The other thing that I really like or you can snipe from the helicopter. You go up into the air and you can control where the helicopter is on the map, but it's up to you to snipe off enemies. And trying to snipe the guy that's sniping from the helicopter is even much harder. It's definitely gonna be fun. It's, I, I, I'm gonna love this every second of it. We're also adding a new robust perk system. Basically, they've split a bunch of perks from the old Call of Duties and made a pretty big list of them. Some perks may be more useful than others or more powerful than others. It may take up five allotted slots, it may take up four, just depending on what you want to use. Usually when you're playing online, you know, you have your headsets and you're calling out where enemies are, but sometimes when you're here in the moment, you forget to. With Battle Chatter, it picks up on where the enemies are and it'll notify you. And there's a couple times where I turned around because there was a guy screaming and I was trying to figure out what he's talking about. And he's 
he's right. Like, there's someone on my six, there's someone behind me. It gives you a better sense of where enemies are, even if you're kind of shy and you want to stay quiet throughout the game. Got hostiles near the wrecked ship! Working on Call of Duty Ghosts has been an amazing trip. We're getting close to the finish here. Uh, everyone's really excited. We were a launch title for the 360, and now to be a launch title for the Xbox One, it's a really, uh, uh, it's kind of a fun, monumental occasion for us. It's, it's, we know it's a lot more work. We know it's a lot harder, and that actually I think just drives us more. And I'm really excited about how Call of Duty Ghosts is going to turn out on Xbox One.